You're a little disoriented. What were you doing? Blinging. You look outside. Everywhere you look, dots of light piercing through a pitch black veil. You adjust the field of view, feeling as though you used to be able to see further than this. Your efforts, however, are to no avail. The stars all seem impossibly far away. You can't shake the feeling that you are out here for a reason. If only you could dredge up a memory of what that reason was. How strange. Traveller. A short, long story by Kaylin Sandell. You consult your maps against the pattern of stars spread before you, but none of them match what you see. The constellations are unfamiliar, and you can't hear anything except the low hum of your own engines. You're lost in space, and on your own. Lacking any other option, you set a course for what seems like the nearest star. You pick one point of light and engage your star drive, speeding towards your destination too quickly to process. Light from the stars stretches into long lines as they streak past your vision. As your star drive disengages, you find yourself in an unfamiliar system. The system's sun, a blue giant class star, shines from the system's centre. There's a medium planet nearby, its surface marked with white, orange and bronze. If you'd like, you can enter the planet's orbit and get a close look. Otherwise, you may as well leave the system. Well, look. I didn't sign up to play this interactive fiction game called Travel at a Non-Travel. So let's have a look at this thing. You sit comfortably in the medium planet's gravitational pull. Great white continents rise from orange seas. Huge clouds of bronze scudding over them. Around the planet, two moons circle. One black, the other pink. From here, you can remotely analyze the planet's atmosphere. Listen for any communication signals. Descend to the planet's surface, or leave the planet's orbit. Let's... let's have a look at the atmosphere. You are disappointed to find that the atmosphere of the planet is unbreathably thin. No human would survive on its surface for long. Which does imply we're human, but maybe not. You can listen for any communication signals. You listen carefully for any signals, checking for every kind of remote signal you know. After a few minutes, you are disappointed at your failure to detect even the faintest communication signal. Ah well, life in space is probably rare, right? Still. It'd be nice if you could find out where you came from, since you don't seem to remember. From here, you can descend to the planet's surface. Why? Well, I don't imagine this game is going to get space quest on me and get me with a sort of like, haha, you fool, you went to the planet. What an idiot. You're nervous about this idea. A lot of systems aren't working correctly, especially your impulse engines. They're strong enough to get you in and out of planetary orbit, but they might not be up to the task of getting you off the surface. If you're going to descend, this planet might be your new and final permanent residence. Descend anyway? Well, we don't know what we're doing, or where we're going, or even what we are. So, even if this decision does cut things off, that may wind up being the best option for us. So we descend anyway. Stealing your nerves, you close your eyes and dive. The air feels hot around you, and you feel your system shudder as you burn through the atmosphere. Soon, the pain becomes too much, and you black out. Note that it says the air feels hot around me, implying that I'm probably not human. I might be the spaceship.
You're not sure how long it takes you to wake up. But you do wake up, rising into consciousness like swimming through tar. You try to take stock of your broken, still body and find that you cannot see. You try to force your eyes open, but they seem to be broken. For a moment, you consider succumbing to despair. But you don't. Pour every ounce of willpower you possess into your eyes, trying to force them into functionality through sheer force and desire. First, it seems nothing happens. Then, with a pop, one of your senses comes online. Everything's a blur, but you can make out smears of colour. The white earth, the orange sky, with bronze clouds floating above. A shore with orange water lapping against it. A moment later, your sense of smell comes back and you take in the atmosphere. A human couldn't live here. But you can. You can fix yourself. You can adapt. You can make a home. There is hope. Traveler. Written by Kaylin Sandell. So, what was this, you may ask? This is an interactive fiction game made by my friend, Kaylin. I've often wondered about how to platform games in this space. These games with their very, um, I guess you'd call them small quantities of gameness. This is not a vast, elaborate, multi-layered fiction. This is very discreet, very small in its own way. But I still really love this kind of thing. And I think it's I think it's worth the time to try and just share these things. This game essentially presented me with maybe I can see five choice points. If the game is particularly picky, I could see a whole network of possible outcomes, and there's elements of it that might be completely random. All that's going to come to the surface when I play it again is a different version of the same game. So let's see what that's like. You're a little disoriented. What were you doing? Blinking, you look outside. How strange. Traveler. You go to the nearest star. We find ourselves in an unfamiliar system. The system's sun, a red giant class star, shines from the system center. Let's once again enter the planet's orbit. And now, its arid surface is beige all over, no clouds or oceans to obscure the view. Around the planet, a single Chartreuse moon traces a lonely orbit. And let us now leave. With a surge of power from the star drive, you break orbit and escape the solar system, leaving the red giant far behind you. What you believe to be a few minutes later, you are in deep space again. You reel slightly, feeling disoriented. You are surrounded by a vast expanse of stars, all alike. Discerning from whence you came and where you might be headed seems impossible. Not much to do out here, but pick a star at random and head towards it. You pick one point of light and engage your star drive, speeding towards your destination too quickly to process. Lights from the stars stretch into long lines as they streak past your vision. As your star drive disengages, you find yourself in an unfamiliar system. You hang in distant orbit from a rare supergiant star, larger than some galaxies. Someday this star will go supernova and become a black hole, but not for a long time by your perspective. There are no nearby planets to approach. You may as well move on. You can take a rest by the glow of the ancient star if you'd like. Your system display suddenly catches your attention, even though it seems to have been flashing something for a while. I imagine a rest is an end of its own. Just simply drifting, 
gently alongside the ancient star until we are found. But let us see. What does the system display? Short-range sensors online. Long-range sensors damaged. Impulse is limited. Star drive is online. Order repair is limited. RAM is limited. Reasonable. No idea of data storage. Communications array is online. Connection quality has no signal. And we have some energy in a very wonderful ASCII display. Now that you've noticed the warning signals in your system's display, you can't seem to ignore them. I wonder if we go back, we'll have the same energy level. Do, do, do. 74%. Okay, so we didn't just lose energy by just, you know, checking it out. I think we should take a rest by the glow of the ancient star. You unfold your wings and bask in the glow of the old star. You wake up completely refreshed. You re refreshed? Refleshed? You return your attention to the dying star. And you see now by pausing and meditating, the game is quietly drip feeding me more options. I want to see if resting changed my energy levels. It did. I now have more energy because I rested. And I can think about my siblings, huh? You had siblings, you're pretty sure. Where could they be by now? I can think about them again. They weren't like mother. They only talked to you when you were nearby. You have a feeling they're all gone now. What about my mission? You were out here for a reason. You think it had something to do with some kind of mission. You have equipment that detects things like atmosphere and communication signals. Perhaps you were a surveyor. You think about your home. You try to register memories of your home planet. Your home planet had a breathable atmosphere. Your home planet had blue oceans and green land and white clouds. You wish you could remember more about it. Did you even see home from the ground? You feel like you never saw that green land up close. At this point, I think, just double checking, all that time thinking didn't deplete energy. Okay, let's go. May as well move on. With a surge of power from the star drive, you break orbit and escape of the solar system, leaving the supergiant far behind you. What you believe to be a few minutes later, you are in deep space again. You reel slightly, feeling disoriented. You are surrounded by a vast expanse of stars, all alike. Let's once again think about our mission. You think that was it? You were sent out here to explore and map. But you can't map anymore. You woke up for the first time in orbit around your home planet. Then you left it and never came back. You remember now. Mother let you know as each of your siblings passed. You felt sad, but not like you feel now. Feeling things was different then. Let's pick a random star and head towards it. An unfamiliar system. A rare supergiant star. We rest again. We have strange and fascinating dreams. Brims, Lost, Juno, Sleep, Centuries. You wake up feeling peculiar but completely refreshed. Did you always dream? You don't think so. Time to move on. Deep space. Pick a random star. Unfamiliar system. This system sun, a blue giant class star, shines from the system center. A tiny dual color planet of beige and beige. Beige on beige. After Labor Day. Hangs a short flight away. If you'd like, you could enter the orbit and get a closer look. 
Otherwise, you may as well leave the system. I'm going to think about my mission again. You don't think you were ever meant to go this far out. Whatever your mission was, it's safe to assume it's over. Let's look at this planet. Textured land masses of beige jut from oceans of beige. Around the planet, a single purple moon traces a lonely orbit. Let's... Let's analyze it again. Disappointed, two oxygen poor, no humans. Listen for signals. Nope. Once again, let's move on. You think about your mother. You miss your mother. You try to send out a communications ping, but there's no response. You feel like you could always reach her, but now you can't. Mother was the one person who was always in reach. You could always talk to her. She was cold, but she was always there for you. You've drifted too far for her to hear you now. Or maybe she can't hear anyone anymore. Your name is Traveller 4. You became lost in space on a scouting mission and drifted so far from Earth that you lost contact with Mission Control's long-range link-up. That was a very, very long time ago. Think about settling down. What do you do now? Your mission is meaningless. You've adapted since you were created, yes, but to what end? What do you do? You can't go home. You suppose you could shut yourself off, but there must be another option. Maybe you should just return to your travels. Your mind keeps returning to your future. Is there a future for you out here? Is there a future for you anywhere? Maybe there's more for you on the surface of a planet than there is out here. It's risky, but it's at least a plan. You can't find your old home, but maybe you could discover a new one. Once again, my future. We find ourselves back there. And that presents us with the question of where to stop. Now you might think, why did I leave? Well, when a civilization does eventually find what was left, if they ever find them, if there's meant to be some place where I grow, or some place where I build anew, or just some place where I lay down and rest forever, I know I would rather it not be beige land next to a beige sky. Let's have a look. Textured land masses of carmine jut from oceans of red. Man, I'm just not getting si I'm just not getting good contrasts here. Still, lousy with dangerous particulate. You have such vivid feelings for what you are. Listen for communications. Nothing. Oh well. We move on. Starting to feel a bit tired. Might have to stop soon. An unfamiliar system. Ah, a chance to rest. You have strange and beautiful dreams. Build, home, explore, settle, home. You wake up feeling more energized. Let's check the system display. Anything terrible going on here? Oof. Let's look at this planet. The white spheroid is striped with white atmospheric gases. Dark spots dot the surface here and there. You wonder if the structures causing them are man-made or natural. Human-made or natural. Around the planet, two moons circle, one grey, the other cyan. It's too cold. Any communication? Probably. 
We're going to check every time. Let's move on. We head towards a random star. Unfamiliar system. Once again, feeling tired. Let's look at this planet. Arid, purple, no clouds or oceans. A single magenta moon traces a lonely orbit. Well. Toxic gases? No. We rest by the starlight once more. Strange and beautiful dreams. Civilization. Wonder. Supergiant. Civilization. Wonder. Head towards another star. Repeating the process. And I don't know what I'm looking for. I think, I think the philosophy of this game, quietly, is that there are no options that are going to be what I want. I'm not going to find a planet with humans living on it. And I'm not going to, by digging deeply enough into this well of text, find the planet that's, like, correct for what I really want. I think... The philosophy of this game is one where, of all the planets, it's a matter of finding the one that appeals to you the most. But also, there is a chance that this game is just very faithfully representing the odds of encountering intelligent life in space. It might be that this game has done the math and that I can sit here, checking planets one at a time, and thousands upon thousands of clicks later, still not find anything, even though there is a chance I could. Purple, violet, and yellow. That's lovely. Great purple continents rise from violet seas, huge clouds of yellow scudding around them. Two moons, purple and black. Well, I do like purple and black. Toxic gases. I have vivid feelings. And I'm at the point now where I think if I keep traveling, I might I might grow too tired and not be able to travel any further. So I think at this point, I think I have to make my rest here. Descend anyway. Blackout. Dear Mother, I have no idea whether this message in a bottle will ever reach you, nor if you still exist to be reached. But I will send one out of this planet's each of this planet's months, and even if you've never received them, perhaps someone will. When I regained consciousness on the surface of this large planet, I was so badly damaged that I could not see. But I was lucky. My ability to heal was still working, and I healed. I healed and adapted. I woke, I recharged, I gathered minerals and fuels, and I used them to make myself better. And oh, when I was fully awake, the things I saw. The purple ground, the blue sky with the yellow clouds floating above. A shore with violet water lapping at it. I adapted my engines to carry me gently along the ground and found such wonders. Peaks and valleys, shapes and fossils, evidence of life long absent. I am better me. I can remember things for longer and longer. I have manipulators now, and I am learning chemistry. I wonder if there isn't life here that I can't detect yet, or what other things there are to discover. I am going to keep looking. I wanted to write and tell you that I'm doing well. I'm alive. I am happy. Yours, your little traveler. This was made by my friend Kaylin Sandell. 
and I am very proud of her.